The question is this. Did slave owners force or encourage slaves to have children? Did slave owners attempt to breed the biggest and strongest slaves? Was this done on a large, almost industrial scale? Enough, in fact, to establish in the African-American population of the modern United States an athletic advantage in speed, size and strength. It is, of course, controversial. Everyone has an opinion. The fact of slave breeding was used by contemporary abolitionists to express the moral evils of slavery. It was minimised by southern apologists to advance the lost cause myth following defeat in the Civil War. Martin Luther King drew upon slave breeding to galvanise activists during the Civil Rights era. Comedians make jokes about it today. To suggest that the descendants of slaves in North America and the Caribbean, or else black people in general, have genetic advantages in terms of, for example, muscle mass and athletic performance, is to invite comparisons with that long, painful and racist history of depicting black people, and black men in particular, as dangerous, stupid, aggressive, over-sexualized, childlike, as primitive, and most importantly, as different, not white. Congress banned the importation of slaves into the United States in 1808. Soil exhaustion in the southeast, and the opening up of fertile lands in the southwest, meant, in the absence of slave imports from abroad, the net transfer of slaves from the Chesapeake to the Deep South, approximately one million between 1790 and 1860. It is the contention of some that to satisfy this increased demand, slaveholders in the Upper South bred vast numbers using techniques normally associated with cattle, that there were entire slave breeding farms dedicated to producing slaves for sale. There is, however, little evidence that slave breeding on this scale existed. In response, attention is drawn to increased child and woman ratios in the exporting areas of the South. In other words, during this period, records show increased numbers of children for every woman. Circumstantial evidence it is therefore claimed that women were being forced in enormous numbers to birth more children. However, it has been shown via abstract statistical analysis and through detailed research of slave auctions during this period that these ratios are likely the result of slave buyers' preference. Traders preferred to purchase males in general, but also teenagers and young adults, and they avoided children. Older females and children were therefore left behind accounting for the higher numbers of children per woman. Yes, almost certainly a lot, and almost certainly in all areas where slavery existed, in the antebellum states. Just very likely not on the scale some historians suggest, and not on the level necessary to establish in their modern descendants any physical or athletic advantage. If that exists, its cause is not to be found in slave breeding. What is true is that many slaveholders encourage slaves to have children. Inducements could come in the form of separate housing, or a piece of land for growing food. If no children were produced, many would be forced to split find a different partner. There is also evidence in the documentary record and in recorded testimony of former slaves of forced pairings. Many slaveholders kept so-called stockmen who they could rent out to other slaveholders. Men chosen for their size or fertility or both. William Maddox of Louisiana allowed the majority of his slaves to choose their own partners, 
except ten women, who he forced to have children with a stockman. His goal was to raise physically fit slaves for market. Evidence exists of females resisting this practice, but others of their eventual acquiescence, often at the point of a lash, or worse. Of course, all this is nothing to say of the innumerable instances of rape of female slaves by the slave owners themselves, their sons, visitors to the plantations, travelling salesmen and so on, or of the slave children that might result. The experience of black men, women and children in the antebellum states was brutal and dehumanising, and within a limited framework, varied. Women would be raped and forced to have children with men they didn't know. They would also express independent action and sought avenues of resistance, whether via induced miscarriages of unwanted pregnancies or in choosing one's own partner. Most historians do not contest that slave breeding happened, only to what degree. Certainly not on anything like an industrial scale. Whilst the science concerned with modern athletic performance and sporting achievement is highly contested, answers will not be found in the history of slave breeding in the United States. Thanks for listening. If you like this, Subscribe and comment below.